advice on AstraZeneca. We've had this happen before. Now, the advice shifting. This jab now recommended for 60 plus, so it's shifted from 50 to 60. Pfizer preferred under 60s. Pfizer will be made available straight away for 40 to 59 year olds. Why? Well, 12 blood clots in the past week. Still only two total deaths from this vaccine from I think 3.6 million doses. And it seems as though that death rate is a lot lower than we were initially fearing, even for the particular groups that are slightly more vulnerable. Uh, so that's the official advice. Will it change the vaccine rollout? According to Greg Hunt, still every Australian will be offered a vaccine this year. Make of that somewhat vague timeline what you want. But let's, uh, well, let's see what my panel thinks. The Warren P. Jason Holinsky and the Labor Party. Patrick Gorman have been keeping me company through another long COVID news conference. Uh, look, I'll start with you, Pat. Anyway, Tom, we've got to go. <laughs> You jest, but, you know, something will happen in a minute. <laughs> um, what do you make of this? It's a very cautious approach. Does it give more confidence or do people sort of go, well, it's shifted to 60 now, it might go to 70, maybe nobody wants AstraZeneca now. We know it's a, a very relatively safe vaccine. Mm. Uh, it is a safe vaccine, but as you know, I've always erred on the side of caution when it comes to the health approaches that we take. We should listen to the health advice. But uh, the real problem we've got here in terms of the supply of vaccines isn't that we're saying here's a caution around one particular vaccine for a particular age group. The problem we've got is that we just don't have enough vaccines from other suppliers here in Australia. And that's something that has been clearly a problem for a long period of time. It's clearly a problem the government could have resolved had they have acted differently last year. Uh, we gambled everything on AstraZeneca. Uh, that was the government's approach. Was it everything? How is it everything? We've got uh, multiple other vaccines. It's not everything on AstraZeneca. Well, for a period of time it was. That, like, that, that is a fact. AstraZeneca By the, was the time first we had the vaccine, vaccine rollout available. in Australia, we had others yeah. available. So there was never a gamble. Just because you have one first doesn't mean you've had everything on that. And what we've got from the Prime Minister now is, uh, having told us earlier in the year, it's not a race. His words, not mine. Uh, he's now saying, and he said it on this network earlier today, that we're going to have to sprint at the end of the year. So we've gone from not a race because of these challenges, which were always... The health officials would have given them advice that mm. these are new vaccines. There are going to be challenges. They should have looked ahead. And so the Prime Minister now to okay. have the solution so, that we've got to sprint at the end of the year, his right. words, I'm really concerned. I'm, I'm not paying the gamble, but I'm going to pay the sprint. I think that's not a bad point. You usually do sprint in a race. You do? You do? If you're any good at it? If, yes. So it's not a race yet. But and as you can say, I'm, I'm a born runner. So. I didn't want to say anything. Like that. <laughs> that's why you keep me around, so I can say it for you. <laughs> I, I look like a runner, but trust me, I'm not. Um, but what's, what's the answer here? I mean, a sprint is a race, isn't it? So it's not a race until we have to somehow meet this December deadline we gave ourselves, so we'll be, we'll be racing at the end. Yeah, I guess we will be. I mean, the fact is that you needed to get the logistics in place. It was always going to be a scale up. We faced, um, I disagree with Patrick, we faced yeah. unanticipated challenges from what the Italians did to the advice from Atagi, which of course Tom stands for. The Australian <laughs> Technical Advisory Group on Immunisation. Oh, that's only because you have it. Gold star. Front of you, don't you? <laughs> but um, and we've had the change of advice from Atagi. Um, we've had the Italian thing. We've had all that sort of stuff happen. Mm. Um, and we're always going to have um, logistical challenges in uh, getting this vaccine, vaccine, vaccine to everyone. So what it's do, always going to scale What up. do you make? Because you mentioned the Italian thing. The criticism of Europe was that it was too conservative to limit it or, or pause it. Now we're being very conservative. This will have some impact, you think, on vaccine hesitancy, people not wanting AstraZeneca. I mean, health advice is never one thing. It's a menu. What do you think of today? Is it too cautious? Well, I mean, you know, I don't have medical training. I'm in no position to argue with Atagi, um, you know, you and I share similar views about, well, if this is so dangerous, why aren't we pulling a whole bunch of other things off the shelf? Mm. Um, but, look, at the end of the day, the, you know, the goal is to make sure that, a, that any Australian who wants to be vaccinated is vaccinated by the end of the year. That's right. what we'll be um, sprinting towards. Can't run, not a doctor. You know, there's a big list of no's yeah, so indeed. far. Do you hold a hose? <laughs> Yes, I do hold a hose. Tell you what, Pat... Though my garden would say to you, not as long as I should. <laughs> Pat started in decent form today. He um, has. Spin Let's this see one. how we finish it. Spin oh, this okay. one for me, Pat. JobKeeper ending, that was going to be a disaster. More than 100,000 jobs created in the past month. Unemployment way below pandemic levels at 5.1%. Yeah. What do you think of that? Oh, look, every Australian in a job is a good thing. 
that's where Labor's concerns were grounded. We were worried about people getting past JobKeeper without a job and without a secure income. So are they unfounded not... concerns now? Well, I think they were appropriate concerns to raise, but obviously, like, I welcome good news. People having a job is good news. And you would expect the opposition to mm. advocate to make sure that we don't leave anyone behind as we go through that, that what are... That's fine, but Labor's entered... warnings haven't come true, have they? Uh, look, these are, as Jason said, these are, you know, unprecedented times. There are things that are going to come up from time... To... Uh, there are things that are going to come up from time to time. And, you know, if you want to talk about broken promises or things that people have said that didn't come true, why isn't every Australian back who's stranded overseas, why aren't they all back by Christmas? Well, they uh, were. Is every Australian going to be fully but vaccinated? Well, the same number were. I don't want to go into that. Yeah. Is oh. every Australian going to be fully but, vaccinated but it's by the end of this year? Yeah, but, so, well, they weren't. But, but, but they it's, weren't. it's appropriate. They kept going. Yeah, and but they were. The ones... we... Yeah, it, we be... said in November, everyone who's overseas, we will get back by Christmas. But and we did. That also wasn't But then there were another 30 or 40 were stuck for a year because they couldn't get back because of limitations on flights and who was booking business class and so on. What? That's true. So you're trying to say that there were some people who didn't come back to Australia because they couldn't fly yes. business yes. class? Yes. No. yes. Well, and that's on us. Well, well sorry, that's on all of that's well, on the parliament. Who's the system of getting back? The, mm. the point is there wasn't an orderly queue. If you number 30,000 and then 30,000 people get back, you're not guaranteed to get back. That's the problem. Well, Aren't your constituents telling you about this? Yeah, absolutely. Most of it is about people trying to get out to see friends, family, ones that they care but about. The ones... Anyway. And, and then, yeah, but, I mean, we said in November, well, the Prime Minister said in November, everyone who's overseas... Who's, who's waiting to get back will get back. We got the, that number of people back. Oh, that number. That's the difference. Yeah. What? It's, because there are some people who refuse to come back. Not refuse. There they would only fly business back. class. No, it wasn't only fly. The issue was yes. there were a certain number of quarantine spots. There were a certain number of places on the plane. Yes. Mm. Airlines were bumping people, unable to get on, and they bumped Oh, because there were some planes. people who so were willing to cattle, cattle you're off. That was the oh, problem. Oh, OK. Right, right, right. They should have put that in the talking points. Um... <laughs> You've All right. got a thing about talking points. Neither has he got talking points. You're the only one with talking points. Yeah, but I wrote my... What, you don't want people to be informed when they come informed to your program? Informed's good. Informed's okay, informed's good. Informed's good. good. Sometimes. Yeah. Well, I feel yeah. like I know yeah. more now than I did when I came in. Well, you better like, say... Atagi and yeah. also the... Uh, well, we did look at that up in the ad break. <laughs> I feel as though we're, we're moving towards far, so let's throw one more in there. Okay, go. Are you going to go your hardest over the Prime Minister over these um, QAnon links? I wouldn't use that terminology. I think what's important is that the Prime Minister answers the questions that have been put to him over a period of time. I think that's a reasonable expectation. What specifically? Um, the nature of, uh, you know, the nature of his engagement with this individual, particularly around the speech that he gave. I mean, that's a pretty serious... You want him to come out and say, here's and, how I know him. No, you know, and, no, and, I, and I think no also, I, you didn't put the word ritual in my speech. And, and, and you're just happy. To, uh, the Prime Minister, it, the Prime Minister has a... Right. Ex, let me finish, Jason. No, 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 but wasn't let, ritual in the report? Uh, ritual was my, in not my, the main no, report, but yeah. the support notes or whatever you yeah. call it. So. so it was pulled from the support notes. Well, the, the, word, the word was in there within well, we, the whole context of the Royal Commission. So that's my but, question, is why... What, 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 well, sorry. Okay. Well, I think, I think the question is, uh, you know, Four Corners is a serious program, is aired some well, serious it concerns about the Prime really? Minister's relationship with this gentleman. I think it's reasonable that if there's nothing to say here, I think it's reasonable the Prime Minister comes out and answers those but questions. But this, so this is like saying, the Prime Minister prove of the to country. me that William he Shakespeare didn't Minister. write Romeo and Juliet. I mean, this is what, uh, this is what Four look, Corners is look, doing these days. We are going to throw look, out... Jason, if absolute... William Shakespeare was the Prime Minister of Australia today, I'd have a lot of questions, including his citizenship. All well, right. so, um... <laughs> On that serious note, Patrick, Jason, good to talk. See you next At week. last. Indeed. Yeah, indeed. Good to be here. See you. Let's get the